Redaber Shem Moshe Velaron Lamor. Zos Chukas a Torah. This is the statute of the Torah, Ashitiva Shem Lamor. Which means the Torah is going to discuss the Paraduma, the red heifer. This is the ultimate statute. So Rashi says, what, what, what does it have to say, the? It's a statute. The many chukim. Shatnes is a chukim. It's a statute. It's something we don't understand within a rational context. Kashrus, dietary laws. We don't understand within a rational context. You're not permitted to crossbreed crops. That's what Torah says. Stealing, damaging, charity, chesed. We understand that because as human beings, we have certain emotions and we're able to process it. Although that's not why God gave us these mitzvahs, but it has relevance to us. We see the value. We see the positive. We see the negative. But a chok, a statute, we can't even begin processing it within a context of its value. But the most difficult is paraduma. Zos chukas Torah. So Rashi says, what does there have to go out of its way to say this is the ultimate statute? Statute. The Sodom and the nations of the world, Monis Israel, they criticize us or they deprecate us. Loma mitzvah zos. They say, you Jews, this mitzvah doesn't make any sense. So they try to somehow to put us in a light, a negative light, that we do things which are total foolishness. Matam yeshba. What is the mitzvah and what what is its rationale? Lefichoch kosba chuka. Therefore, Torah it's chuka. Gzerim lefonai. It's a decree before me. Eilcho rishus laarechreil. And because it's decree before me, you have no right even to try to comp- contemplate or reflect on its rationale. It's beyond your comprehension. You can't come up with even an iota of understanding of why. So therefore, as a result of this, the criticism or the deprecation or the classification they want to put you in, just ignore. So the question is, but they're still criticizing us. They're still deprecating us and they're still putting us into a certain category of behavior which to them is not rational behavior so what's the answer we find that the torah the morale of prague explains the appellation torah why is torah called torah because moshe says torah tzivin lono moshe moshe ki why is torah called torah it should be chokhmah it's god's wisdom so the morale of Prague explains, Torah, the word means lahoros. It's to direct us, to give us direction. It gives us, it's the prescription of life for the Jew, how to lead his life. Like we say, mora derech. It's the showing us of a way. So if that's the case, why does the Torah begin with creation? Creation has no relevance to halacha. Correct? Has no, nothing. It gives us the whole history of existence. Bereshiz bar lo every day of creation, what happened, and all the various events of the Book of Bereshis, what what is its value? So Rabbi Yitzchok, Rashi cites the Midrash, Rabbi Yitzchok says, because the nations of the world have come to us with a very serious claim, criticism, you people, you're interlopers. You've taken away a land which you had no right. You destroyed the seven nations of Canaan. You took the land from them. You have no right to it. So Kodesh Baruch Hu says, I created this world. It's mine to give, it's mine to take. I have taken it away, and that's the history of the world. I've taken it away from the nations of the world, and I have given it to the seven nations of Canaan. I've given it to my, my, my people, to the Jewish people, to Canaan. So you have a right to it. It's rightfully yours, and therefore the claim of the world, it's not a claim. That's why... The Chavisha Chum Torah begin with what? With the story of creation. God is the creator. It's for his to give and to take. As we see he did. Therefore he gave it to us eternity, eternally. The land of Canaan is ours. So there's an obvious question. Go tell it to the Arabs. Our Chumash, our Holy Bible starts with creation to communicate this message. 
go tell it to the communists. Go tell to go tell it as they used to say. Go tell it to the marines. Tell it to whoever you want. So what, what kind of response is this? The answer is it's not a response for them. It's a response for us. If we there's an accusation and we feel there's any basis for the accusation, immediately there's a guilt. Especially the Jewish people being more moral and ethical than any nation in existence. They have a claim. Of course, Baruch says they have no claim. It's mine to give, it's mine to take, and therefore they have no claim. We who believe we have a Mesorah, we had a Sinai. If that's the case, you could accuse us of whatever you want. It's rightfully ours. When Yaakov went to take the Bechorah, which he you know he rightfully bought from his brother, regardless of the claim Esav had against him, it was relevant. The Bechorah, the birthright, belongs to Yaakov. The land of Canaan is ours, regardless of what the world says. It's as long as we know the truth, they come in with this condescending, deprecating, critical eye. This, it doesn't make sense. The Parat Duma. It's my decree. You have the right even to contemplate, reflect on it. It's beyond human comprehension. It's the most difficult statute. Shlomo Baruch says in Koelos Rechoki Mimeni, it's beyond me. It's something that even I, who is the Chochem Yikolotim, no human being was ever as brilliant, as wise as Shlomo Melch, it's beyond me. It's even I cannot. Although it, Shlomo's wisdom borders on the infinite, but it's not the infinite. The Torah itself is the infinite. And because it's the infinite, the only one who understands it is only Hashem himself. Therefore, that's its reality. So it's not given for you to understand, it's for you to accept. Now there's a Orachim HaKodesh here who writes that, and here's a question, it's referred to Zos Chukas HaTorah. This is the statute of the Torah. I and mean, we speak about the laws of person comes in contact with the dead, becomes contaminated. The only way he's able to relieve himself of the contamination is through the ritual of the Paraduma, which the coin is involved and how it has to be done and what qualifies as the Paraduma, as the red heifer. It should say Zos Torahs HaTuma. This is the laws which pertain to spiritual contamination. Zos Torah sa Tyro. This is the laws which pertain to purification. Why is it Zos Chukas ha Torah? So he explains, we were in Egypt, in Mitzrayim, we brought the Karm Pesach. We were contaminated. Although we contaminated, there's no mention that we had to purify ourselves before we engaged in the Karm Pesach. So he explains why, because until Sinai, before Kabbalah's Torah, we were, we were B'nai Noach, we were Noahites. A non-Jew is not, doesn't in any way contract contamination. A non-Jew could go in the cemetery, he's not contaminated. Only a Jew contaminates, is susceptible for contamination. When did this transition happen? This happened at Sinai. When we received the Torah at Sinai, then we took on another capacity level of susceptibility, and only then that these laws apply to us. So those chukah, this chukah, this statutes came about as a result of Kabbalah Satoru receiving Torah Sinai. Now, a non-Jew only has relevance to the Shev Mitzvah Dei Noach. Seven Noahide laws. A Jew has Tarek Mitzvahs. We have 240 positive, 365 negative commandments. That's what the Torah is. And we say Talmud Torah can get kulam. There's no question. The Torah was given to us to perfect our neshama, and because the Jewish soul is a, has a different spiritual makeup, what has to be addressed and developed and advanced within our neshama, the non-Jew has a different neshama. Rav Chaim Velozhina writes that even the greatest malach, the greatest angel, cannot fathom the makeup of the Jewish neshama. Why? Because the Jewish neshama, the, the nishmas Yisrael, comes from just below the Kisei HaKovot, under the heavenly throne, and which is the highest level, and everything else was created below that point. So even the greatest angel, since he was created from a lesser level, he cannot fathom what the Nishmas Yisrael is. So the Torah itself, which is unfathomable, because it's infinite, as we discussed, who made the menorah? Moshe Rabbeinu tried to make the menorah, he had difficulty. Hashem says, take the block of gold, put it into the oven, into the furnace, or the kiln, it came out of menorah. Only HaKadosh Baruch Hu 
It says Teosa Menorah, because every aspect and every vessel in the Mishkan had to be infused with an intent. The intent for Torah, which is infinite, only the infinite can infuse it with that intent. Since the Nishmas Yisrael could only be developed and advanced and perfected through the Torah, therefore, what happened at Sinai, this transformation, that we, there was a metamorphosis, we, we became a different dimension of being due to the Torah at that moment. So the laws of spiritual purity and impurity and the process of how to bring it, this about is directly related to Torah itself. 